Welcome to part 3 of Lecture 6 of Bluff Body Aerodynamics. So now we'll briefly consider some sound sources on cars, as well as how to reduce them. So the big challenge uh, in doing this is actually to isolate sound sources for testing the impact of design changes. Really, to do this requires an artificial elimination of other sound sources by either sort of taping or covering things with fabric, um, the other potential leakage path, bumps, etc. in the surface. Otherwise, it can be utterly impossible to determine the impact of a design change for a small component, for example, a side mirror. So as was alluded to earlier, leaks produce monopole sound sources. Um, so if you've got flow moving in and out of a cavity via a leak, we'll have a, this monopole characteristic. And since these tend to be strong, even at relatively low speeds, it's critical to eliminate these as much as possible. Principal sources of these kinds of leaks are window and door seals. Um, when driving at highway speeds, there's a pressure difference between the inside and outside of the vehicle that can be enough to drive flow, and so uh, the risk of leaks goes up. Um, in an aeroacoustic wind tunnel, which is a special wind tunnel made for measuring noise, basically where it's quite quiet inside the wind tunnel, um, this can be assessed by taping over all the gaps and grooves to get sort of a no leak sound level. Um, and then areas are sort of untaped one by one to get their individual contributions to figure out which ones are the most critical for sound reduction. Because of the logarithmic nature of acoustics uh, in terms of human perception, um, the dominant contributors will have an outsized contribution to the overall level. And um, it's m even more so than normal, it's sort of worth going after the lowest hanging fruit first. So to see the impact that these sort of seals can have, um, we can see that this, these are gonna impact uh, all frequencies in a significant way. So this is for some vehicle and um, what we see is that the top level data, the dashed line, is basically just the regular vehicle. Um, the uh, data with the uh, squares on the solid line um, is the vehicle with add-on parts removed, so side mirrors, etc., removed. Um, and then uh, the black solid line with the diamonds is um, that sort of vehicle with no add-on parts but with all the seals taped and we can see that there's a significant reduction of around five decibels across the entire frequency range. These side mirrors are, um, are a major focus of sound radiation in vehicles. You get this relatively quick flow coming around the A-pillars, means that we can get high sound level generation for the mirrors, especially um, for uh, dipole sources. Um, so there, there's, you know, the overall shape is going to be set by aesthetics and some major aerodynamic considerations, but there's some minor details that are available for acoustic optimization. So the drainage grooves, the folding joints, and the housing drainage for the mirror um, are all things that can be um, modified to improve the acoustic performance. Another thing that you can do is install vortex generators at the edge, uh, inside edges of the mirrors, especially to reduce uh, sound. This is something that um, you don't see all that often on smaller vehicles, but you will see this sometimes on larger trucks, um, both commercial and passenger trucks, where the mirrors are bigger. Um, and what essentially this is doing is these bumps are breaking up the coherence of flow separations, and um, this disturbs the periodicity, and it gives some mutual cancellations to the sounds and therefore reduces its amplitude. The exposed windshield wipers, if they're sort of not hidden away when not in use, are another sound source. This is actually the reason that they're protected by the hood on most modern vehicles. Um, we can see uh, that with the wipers present, uh, especially sort of in this upper frequency range here, there's some uh, significant increases. We remove the wipers and the noise goes down a bit. We add spoilers, which are essentially the covers that you see on modern vehicles, and when the cover gets big enough, then the, the sound level comes down significantly. The long antenna rods are not often seen on modern vehicles, sometimes short ones still are, um, and these antennas can cause dipole noise sources through vortex shedding. Basically we can get tonal sound because of the periodic vortex shedding from these kind of antennas. Um, it can be a pretty significant noise source. Um, you can reduce it by inclining the antenna uh, and wrapping a wire around it, um, which is another measure to break up the periodicity of vortices, and this is what you often see in modern vehicles. 
the presence of the A pillars contributes to sound in two ways. Um, the A pillars, uh, basically their design uh, influences the strength of the longitudinal vortices uh, uh, sort of going around the sides of the vehicles, so that affects that side mirror sound production. And the rain gutters within the A pillars can also lead to a local unsteadiness in the flow basically because they act like cavities and the sound generation. So you can see the impact if you tape over the, the rain gutters, um, that especially sort of up around a couple thousand hertz, um, you actually get a pretty significant reduction in noise and then it may, it's maintained up to high frequencies. You can get very loud sound if you have resonant cavities in a vehicle. Um, the most relevant one is actually the entire vehicle interior um, when either the windows or the sunroof is open. Um, these can act then as what's called a Helmholtz resonator. Basically a Helmholtz resonator is a, a conceptual device in which um, there is a natural frequency, which is the frequency at which very small excitations can cause large sound levels. Um, relate, and that natural frequency is related to the volume, the length of the opening of the cavity, and the area of the opening. Um, normally with this kind of thing you get a, an, an excitation at a certain range of flow speeds, normally between sort of 40 and 90 kilometers an hour for most vehicles, and it can be really loud, up to something like 130 decibels at a low frequency of 20 hertz, which is very uncomfortable um, and actually not good for human hearing. One way to deal with this problem is um, to install sort of air deflectors or nets at the uh, openings of the sunroof. Um, you see this on most modern vehicles in one form or another. You may see these sort of little dips that sort of break up the vortex shedding or sometimes sort of a net like this um, which will essentially um, force the, the vortex shedding to occur over much smaller scales. Obviously this kind of thing adds drag. Um, one other area to think about is the underbody of the vehicle. Um, the sort of unevenness and the shape of the underbody of a typical vehicle can generate low frequency sounds down sort of a couple hundred hertz. Um, and you can see that if we um, add a low front spoiler to reduce the amount of flow that goes under the vehicle, that helps in reducing that noise. And smoothing the underbody also helps. So that is uh, the end of the material for this course. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it, and uh, I wish you best of luck in the remainder of your studies.